Welcome back for more board game plays. Today we were playing Glenmore, which is an awesome, awesome tie laying game, which I enjoy very much. It's from designer Matthias Kramer. It takes about 60 minutes and is for 2 to 5 players. And let's see how we can how it is played. So each player starts with six coins and a tableau with a village and a meeple on it. And this is the board where players can acquire the tiles that they lay down on each of their player boards. I'm first player apparently. And the clue on this is the yeah, not, not the clue there. Special thing about this, you can acquire any of those tiles, but the farther you go, uh, or the player which is uh, last on the line goes always first. This means the farther you go, it takes longer time until it's your next turn. So you don't want to go too far um, because a lot of players take action before you can go again. So you want to take early tiles. And let's see what there is. There's a quarry which produces stone, a forest which produces wood, pasture which produces meat, and a wheat field which produces a wheat and a meadow which produces wool. I think that's the five of those resources that we, uh, you can produce. Also there's whiskey. Uh, you can transform um, wheat into whiskey later on. Um, so I think a, a stone and wood is basically mainly for buildings that you build. Wheat is made mainly for whiskey and sh wool and meat is uh, for trading in for points directly um, with the uh, not sure what the building is called so and what is special about this is how you can uh, where you can add those buildings. As you can see the quarry has two blue lines there which means a river and the river goes always from north to south through your village and the forest there has uh, a road the, those white lines here and the road goes from west to east. That means every building with a river goes on this line and every building with a road goes on this line and the buildings with no um, line uh, like this meadow here. No, it has uh, like this castle here. Um, go can go in these corners, basically. Every building that you add has to go adjacent to an existing building, and it has to have a meeple on one of the surrounding eight tiles. So in the beginning. There's no restrictions, but the more buildings or the more tiles you lay down, the harder is it to add new tiles because you have only one meeple. So there are more villages coming up, like here, which gives you a meeple. That's on the bottom right is always the immediate effect, and in the bottom, in the bottom is the effect you get when you activate a tile because every time you add a tile every adjacent eight tiles get activated you see that later how it plays out so um, if I add a quarry for example here I get one stone because the village gets activated which means I can move a meeple which makes no sense in the beginning and the quarry gets activated which means I get a stone. If I build a forest later, here, I can 
a, a, the forest get activated and produces a wood and the village and the quarry gets activated as well because it's one of the adjacent eight tiles so it produces a second stone and so on so the more you build around it the more, more often it gets activated but each of the producing tiles has a limit of three resources on each tile you can't stockpile them and there is also the market which I go into later detail uh, de detail later on but basically uh, whenever you buy a building you can uh, if you don't have the resources for example this costs stone and wood you can buy them um, for um, for for coins and it depends um, how often it get bought the, the first player who buys it co it costs one the second player it costs two and the third player it costs three and when resources get sold again it gets um it gets cheaper again so it's the the price adjusts on the demand of the resource basically so i think in the beginning it really doesn't matter which resource tile I get, I think I just get the first one and add it here. So now I have to uh, say which tiles I want to activate, I only want to activate the quarry and that's it, that's my first turn. See you later for the next turn. Alright, before I take my second turn I want to talk quickly about scoring because I forgot about that. Um, you see here there are three piles of tiles and uh, first the uh, pi uh, one pile gets distributed on this board then the tiles of two and then the tiles of three and whenever one tile is empty a scoring phase happens and uh, what is getting scored? Um, first every Chieftain. A chieftain is every meeple that is off the board, because every time you can move a meeple, you can also move it off the board. Because uh, you don't want to do that, because then it you get limited by how many tiles you can put on the board or where you can put them on the board. Like now, above the quarry, I can't put the tile there because on the quarry there's no meeple. Uh, and also on special tiles like Armadale Castle here um, if you buy Armadale Castle you get free coins and a hat and a hat is counts like a chieftain so uh, how many chieftains you have and it, it is looked um, the player with the lowest amount and is compared with is with compared with you and the difference like you can see here to you is how many victory points you get so if you have two more chieftains than your opponent then you get two victory points and if you have five chieftains more you get eight victory points and the same comparison is made with whiskey how many whiskey you have and how many special tiles you have, like Armadale Castle. So you want a lot of special tiles, but uh, expensive, you want a lot of chiefston, but you always want, also want meeples on the board, and you want whiskey. And you can whiskey from, get from distillery, like here, um, where you can trade wheat into whiskey. And then when the final round is over, the, f the, f uh, the free pile is empty, uh, all this uh, comparison is made again, and all the coins, uh, and all then all the special tiles are counted, there are co uh, t tiles which score uh, dif uh, um, specially, and uh, all, for each coin you get a point, and that's really important, for each tile that you have more than the person with the lowest amount of tiles on the board, you lose three weekly points. So I can get, for example, the pasture now basically for free. Only the green player.
goes before me. But if I, the page I don't use it very often, uh, it's basically minus three victory points for me. So you always want, only want those tiles that really help you. Getting many uh, tiles isn't that helpful because you lose a lot of victory points. That is also something that you have to keep in mind. Um, so I don't think I want the pasture. Meat is not that important. I rather have wood because, for example, I can buy Armadale Castle later. Or I want wheat because I can get the distillery later. I ho have the stone that the distillery costs and if I get a forest I have uh, the stone and the wood that Armadale Castle costs. So I'm leaning towards forest or wheat field. Uh, I'm not sure what I really want. I really want a distillery. But there's another wheat field coming up. I think I get a forest. And this is the only place where I can put it. And now I activate that. And I activate that. And now I can move one of my meeples. I want to move it because Otherwise, I can't put out uh, something with a river uh, on its tile. So let's move it like here. No, let's undo that here. I rather want to activate my quarry than my forest. I think stone is more important. All right. Let's see what the other people have done. Wheatfield and Village. Only a quarry. And Forest Armadale Castle for free coins and a chieftain. And a pasture. Alright. Um, so another distillery came out. That's great. There's Lock Locky, where I can take any two resources when I get this. And there's annual fair where, where whenever it gets activated, I can trade one, two, three resources to get uh, different resources to get one, three, or five points. So I think I take the wheat field and then the distillery. Although I need a village really desperately. And let's see what I get, but I definitely take the wheat field here. So I activate the wheat field, the quarry, the forest. And do I want to activate the village? No. Alright, so I can basically take the annual fare for free. Well, I have to pay one wood, but I get to go again immediately. I think it's better than not doing it. Paying, um, the worst case, it gets it goes even. I pay two resources to get the three points back that I lose from getting extra tile. I think it's worth it. Then I can get Lock Locky basically for free, which is really good. Take any two resources. Let's see what Red has. He has already the distillery. So it's not even a big risk because he probably won't get the distillery, especially as he doesn't have stone. Because I want the distillery and I want the village, but there are three villages upcoming. But if I get Lock Locky, wow, I I have trouble. Let's count that.
I think I get an old fair. Put it here. Pay with wood. Activate that and that. And I activate my village to move one to the right. And do I want to trade goods already? I definitely want to trade one stone because it all depends if I got get lock lock here. If I get lock lucky, I can't build. No, I don't think I can because I have to put lock lucky here, and then I have to move up to build on on a river, a tile of the river. But then I won't be able to build a tile with a road. And the distillery has a road and two of the three villages has a river. So I don't think I could take Lock Locky. Which is unfortunate. So I don't think I want to activate Annual Fair then. Yeah, well, let's do it. Uh, one stone and one wheat. Okay. And then I move one here. And finish my turn. Mm, I don't know why it's moved to the left. Alright, and now I get the distillery. Put it there. Pay with stone. Activate that. And activate that. Uh, and pay with one wheat. And finish my face. Why do I have... Ah, I get one whiskey immediately. I wondered because why I have two whiskey, but I get one whiskey immediately. I forgot about that. Alright. Finish phase. And end turn. Alright, great. There's even, there are even two villages left. So I can take this village. Put it there. Pay with this. Activate my quarry. Activate this village, and no, I don't want to activate that. Now let's see. I want to move this one to here. All right, it's my turn again. And I think I want a village. I only have two villages, and I really want to have a meeple down there so that I can activate my forest again. Castle Stalker is also really nice. Gives me also two meeples and achievements. Achievement. But it costs me a wood. So basically, it gives me two meeples instead of one and achievement. But it costs me one coin. I can do that. I think it's more important to get Castle Stalker than Village. And all the others are not that important. Wheatfield I already have. Butcher I don't have. Sheep. Animal Fair I already have. Forest I already have. Pasture. I don't have anything to do with the meat. 
and Castle Moyle gives me a whiskey barrel, which is also not, not that important because I can. I already have the distillery, so I think, yeah, Castle Stalker is the best thing. And pay one here. Activate that, activate that. Move that one here. And here. Alright. Alright, I forgot to mention that the first scoring happened, I think. I got two points because of my two whiskey barrels. Let's look at the other players' boards. He got eight points because he butchered apparently a lot of sheep. And this player has only four tiles so far. Two quarries and two villages. Not sure what he's doing, but it will be. I will lose a lot of points in the end for um, the tiles, for the many tiles that I have. And this person, wow, he has a lot of goods, okay. So what do I do now? I can take the wheat field for free, but do I really need it? I can make more whiskey. Let's see, I don't need an animal, f animal fair, I don't need a forest. I can get the pasture, it would be in different resources for the animal fair. That would be a possibility. Uh, for Castle Moil, I don't have any wood. And it would give me a chieftain and a whiskey barrel. And of course, another special building, which rises, uh, um, gives me also another point on each scoring. I can get another village. I can get Yona Abbey, although I don't have sheep and I don't have wood. This tile gives me two points for each yellow tile, so at the moment six. Another annual fair with which gives additional points if you pay four different goods, and then a quarry. Hmm. Um. I think I have two op options. Either the pasture, so that I have a different good to pay to the annual fair, or the wheat field. Wheat field is for free, so I would put it here, activate all of that, and then I could take Castle Moil and only need to pay, don't need to pay anything because I have the wood. get a lot of whiskey barrels that way. Mm, yeah. I kind of like to take the wheat field. So activate that, activate that, activate that. Activate that I want to remove one of my people to make to achieve and activate that and pay one wheat. Then I move that and make it to a chieftain. And finish my move. And then I take this put it here. Activate this, activate this. Uh, I have to pay first. Okay, I pay this. And pay this. Activate this, activate this. Activate that, pay with this. And make another people to a chieftain, I think. Yeah, I kind of like the moves. I have five whiskey now, five coins. Although I have ten tiles, that's really bad, but... Yeah, I have two heads and two meeples away, that's four chieftains. Which gives me also a lot of points on the next scoring. 
All right, before I make next my next make my next turn, there are only seven tiles left in the second pile. And yeah, so I have to take that into account. I only have two wheat, so I can't take this village. It, I can take it, but it costs me three coins. I can take can't take this annual fair. Oh, I don't need it. What I really want is the tavern. It costs me one whiskey and gives me three points every time it gets activated. And Loch Ness, because once per turn I can activate any one of my tiles and I want to activate the tavern. This is a really good combo here. For the Loch Ness, I have to pay one of my... I'm not sure if I have to pay one of my meeples on the board or if I can pay with one of my chieftains. So let's try it out. I think I take the Loch Ness and hope to get the tavern. I hope. Um, let's see. This player and this player have no whiskey. Only the red player. Um, let's hope he doesn't take the tavern. So I take this. Put it there. Moved one chieftain. Mandatory if there's only one clan member on a display or any one clan member. Oh, okay, so I can pay with some chieftain. That's good. Okay. Activate. I can activate one tile even this turn. That's nice. What do I want to activate? I guess the distillery. I get two victory points here for each of green tiles. All right. Or the quarry or the forest so that I can pay. Um, no, I think I want to activate the distillery. Pay with one wheat. And then I activate this one to move this here. And that's my turn. Alright, the second scoring happened. I got a lot of points. I'm currently in the lead. Let's see what the other players have. So this is the other player who has a lot of whiskey. I'm not sure what this player does. He only buys villages in Kurori in this uh, Lok Morar, which awards points for gre green tiles, which he hasn't any. And he has only six tiles so far, though, so we lose a lot of points, so I'm still a little bit worried here. And yeah, he took three coins here and gains points for villages. That's something you have to keep in mind. So the tavern is still there, so I for sure take this. Um, I think I want uh, Castle of May gives doubles my chieftains. I only have one so far, so and I can't afford it. I think I want a village next, or another tavern, of course. But the red player probably grabs the tavern, so I think I get the village. I think I put it here. I think I want a village, so I put it here so that I can get um thing, so that I can get the wood. Um. So I think this is now lock lock ness activates. I think I activate the quarry the tavern. I can't activate a tile twice as far as I know. Uh, let me check that quick. Yeah, I can't activate a tile twice, so I think I activate the quarry. Then I activate the forest and the tavern. And yeah, nothing really else. I think I want to keep the meeple here. Yep. Alrighty. Um, so apparently red got the tavern as expected. 
So I think I get a village now as planned, and then maybe Castle of May. I stubble my chieftains, which is really nice. I get one, which I can turn into chieftain and double my chieftains. So this would be my second, and this is my third chieftain. And double that, that's six, so that I can score again a lot of points. Or I can get Cordor Castle, which gives me free bonus. That's also free chieftains. Basically the same. Yeah, that's basically the same. So, yeah, let's get the village. And I think I activate, I can activate my tavern anyway. So I put it here to activate my wheat field, my distillery again. Pay with that. No, uh, no, let's see, let's. Now let's reset the move. Wait a second. Um, I take the village. No, I can't put it at the forest. I because I want the wood. Let's reset the move. <laughs> or do I want the castle of May immediately? Because if I get the village, I don't have the wood that I need to buy castle of May. And that's the problem. No, I I get the village and activate that. Uh, I do that uh, now. I activate that tile. Activate that tile. Activate that tile. Pay with wheat. And I don't think I want to activate that tile. I only have one stone and a wheat. I could get three points. Or should I do that? No. I don't have many turns left. I would don't want want to pay the stone because I want to uh, basically I can sell one wheat to get one point, but I can also sell one wheat later to get one coin, which is also one point. So no, I don't think I want to activate that. And I want to activate this, finish the phase. Uh, want to move that to chieftain, and that's my turn. All right. Um, yeah, here was the grocer, and he got eight points from that. Apparently, you can sell three of the same kind of resources to get eight points. I thought it has to be three different resources, but apparently, I was wrong. Uh, okay. So he's still dangerous here because he has only seven tiles and yeah I want the castle of May but I don't have wood and I don't have meat so I could if I only hmm, it would cost me three coins three points that I lose but it also gives me double your ch chieftains I get Meeple that I turn in chieftains into a chieftain, so this gives me six chieftains. I can gamble and take the forest so that I have wood and then buy the castle of May. Or, or again, it's not really gambling, I can get. Quarter castle for sure, which gives me also the same amount of points basically. Uh, but Castle of May is a little bit better because it also gives me a hat, so that's one more point basically. Um, 
the red player has stone and wheat. So he has to pay also free um, free coins if he wants to do that, but he has no coins. So I it's no gamble. So I think I take this. And put it here. Um, the tavern activates anyway, so I think I activate the wheat field. And later I can have enough to uh, sell again free resources, maybe for five points. Yeah, that's good. Activate the wheat field. Activate the tavern, activate the forest, activate the forest, activate the quarry, and activate the village, and move here. Yeah, that's my turn. So the red player went really far ahead and got Loic, which activates all of your tiles once, which is really good. So, what do I do now? I thought first I for sure take Castle of May because it only costs me basically, I have to pay only one coin for the meat. But I'm not sure about that now because I already have four chieftains, inclusive, inclusive, inclusive um, the heads, so two plus two, that's four. And I only need five more than the one with the fused, and he has zero currently. So I only need a village or something to get that, but if he gets more villages, he or later even he can make of one of his meebles into a chieftain. So I'm I'm torn if I should do that. Let's see the other options. I certainly don't want a quarry. I could get that, but that's just better. It's earlier and gives me more. Uh, the village is the same thing. I'd rather get Castle of May. Well, this is cheaper. I don't need that. I can get the tavern. It might be really good because I have a whiskey spare. Uh, but I can get that next because um, these two don't have any whiskey. And I don't need that. He don't have doesn't have wheat for whiskey here. Yeah. And Lock Shield puts one resource on each empty space that can produce. And the bridge to is really good turns stone and wood into seven points. I really want that. So let's see here. I really want the bridge. Let's think about that for a second. Alright, I thought it was a little bit through. Um, there are se only seven tiles left. So if I get the bridge, this is my last turn. Unfortunately, I didn't think this through earlier. I have to put it here on top, and I can't put, turn any of my meeples into chieftains then. So this is a little bit unfortunate. But I really want to take this because it gives me seven points, and I can sell a lot of stuff even. Uh, because I don't have the opportunity to get that again. Unfortunately, I can't activate the annual fair. Um, if I take Castle May, I can't e can't activate annual fair either. Um, but I have the option to go again. The only thing is, Green might take the bridge from me because he can put the bridge on top of the village. Activate a forest and sell stone and wood for seven points. So he might want it. So I'm not really sure what to do. It's a risk to get Castle of May. But it would give me a lot of points again, again, eight points for chieftains. It would be give me in uh, my fourth special uh, tile. 
So I get three points, uh, one more point again for that. And I might get the bridge later. I could activate my tavern again. So it's all if I want to take the risk for the bridge or not. So I'm not really sure about that. So I thought about this like five minutes now and I think I take the risk. So I let's see I don't I haven't thought about where I want to put it. I think I put it here to get that stuff again. And yeah. So put it here. Uh pay with this pay with this and buy this um, activate the tavern activate this activate this activate this and I don't need this anymore so I can make that to achieve them as well because I either get the tavern or the bridge next, so I can either put it here or here. And this is the last turn anyway. So, activate this, finish phase. I want to move that to Chieftain, move that to Chieftain, and that's my turn. And it's my turn again, and Green didn't pick the bridge, it, he picked the, another castle. Which is good, because wood is now more um, expensive, which I so I get more if I sell that, uh, sell it. Yeah, so it's easy, I... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so yeah, so it's my last turn. I take the bridge, put it here. So which tile do I activate? I don't think I want to activate the annual fair. I have I can sell free to get five point if I uh, instead of the tavern where I get three points, but I can sell wood and stone if I activate the tavern so that I get one more point. So let's see if it works out. I activate a tavern, activate a bridge for this and this and then I sell this and I sell this and I have two wheat left but I can't sell it or do anything else with it so this is basically my last turn did I miss something? Mm, no. I hope I have enough points to be better than the white player, which activates probably its gro his grocer again to sell his stone. Oh man! If I only would have known that it means free resources of the same kind. Then I probably, if I could, not sure if I could, I would have blocked the grocer for him. So I'm a little bit worried. So eight, I lose 24 points because um, he has a lot less tiles. So, but let's hope it's enough. I get a lot of points in the end. See you later. All right, the game is over. Scoring. I get eight points for my barrels, eight points for my chieftains, and three for my special locations. Here is 8 to 1. The white player only 2 for his barrels. He bought the uh, distillery in the last turn, got 2 barrels whiskey. And here 8 and 2. I got 7 points for um, coins. Lost 24 points because I had a lot of tiles. A double. <laughs> uh, double the amount of the white player and 
this uh, the red player got 8 points and lost 15 points, the white player got 11 points for coins and the green player 6 for uh, the amount of villages and 3 points for coins and lost 12 points and this is the final scoring and I win with 42 points, second the green player with th uh, 34 then the red player with 31 and the white player with 21. Yay, I won! I'm glad that I won. I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave some comments. And yeah, see you next time. Bye!